Welcome to Chipotle. Thank you for your bravery. It's been a rough few years for Chipotle, the Mexican food chain that was the darling of the industry for most of the past two decades. America's preferred over-the-counter laxative. Chipotle, at its peak, was the model for what a Mexican chain could be, and because of that, it was met with a ton of copycats and competition. This, along with the mostly foodborne illness scandals, have brought Chipotle close to bankruptcy and in danger of completely collapsing. They've experienced six food safety failures involving norovirus, salmonella, and E. coli. So, with that in mind, get your small intestine ready as we look into the top 10 untold truths of Chipotle. <laughs> Bleeding. Oh, and just so you know, guacamole's extra. Chipotle. What are you gonna do? Go to Taco Bell? <laughs> the founder of Chipotle, Steve Ells, is a real chef. If you're like other Americans, you love to eat Chipotle, but you hate all those terrible blood stains in your underwear. Chipotle was founded by Steve Ells, who attended the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park, New York. And after that, he landed a gig that would change his life as a line cook for Jeremiah Tower at Stars in San Francisco. It was there that he learned not only how to cook Mexican dishes like taquerias and San Francisco burritos, but also, and perhaps most importantly, how immensely popular they both are inside and outside of the Mission District of San Francisco. The Mission District is famous for its taquerias and Mexican food in general, thanks to its high concentration of Salvadorian, Guatemalan, and Nicaraguan people and restaurants. With the mission-style burrito, you just get so much more. And who can argue with that? After acquiring a loan of $85,000 from his father, Ells opened the first Chipotle in Denver, Colorado, near the University of Denver, using what he had learned at Jeremiah Tower. And from there, he was able to test his version of the San Francisco and Mission Burrito. And almost immediately, he realized that he had a hit on his hands. Don't forget the sauce! opening the second Chipotle location a little under two years after the first, using solely money from the first store and not from a loan, which is generally unheard of in the restaurant industry. Liking this video so far? Hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. Chipotle was 10 times more profitable than they'd hoped. People always hook the arm over the glass. I'll have corn. I'll have more corn. The first Chipotle restaurant was opened in 1993, thanks to a loan from Steve Ells' father. Can I get corn? Just say corn! While $85,000 is a relatively small loan, It's a few hundred dollars, but it's well spent, you know what I mean? Especially when the costs of opening a new restaurant are taken into account, Ells and his father realized that he'd need to sell 107 burritos a day to break even at his first location near the University of Denver. While it was still only a one-location restaurant at that point, people in the early to mid-90s weren't used to getting high-quality Mexican fast food, especially not with fresh ingredients that you can see while the chef is making your order. And it was a combination of those factors that led Chipotle to explode nearly overnight. What did we eat? Sinks a goner! What are you doing? It's coming out of me like lava! After just a month in business, Ells has stated that he was making over 1,000 burritos a day, which is 10 times the amount he needed to break even, and was enough to allow him to open a second location in a year and a half without having to take out a loan. While the third location was open thanks to a loan, his father clearly saw that he had a winning concept and decided to invest $1.5 million into his son's restaurants, which clearly has paid itself back in spades over the years. Get your claw out of the salsa. The first Chipotle was located inside an ice cream shop with a famous name. Hey, Jillian. Hello. You're inside a Chipotle burrito where everything is real. For Chipotle's first location, Ells chose a spot near the University of Denver with a lot of history behind it, as it was once named Dolly Madison Ice Cream. Dolly Madison was the first lady of the United States back when James Madison was in office, and she actually served ice cream at her husband's inaugural ball way back in 1813. Because people didn't have refrigerators, let alone freezers back then, the concept of ice cream was completely foreign. And because of that, Madison is widely credited with popularizing ice cream with the masses. And so it's just a weird coincidence that the person that is credited with popularizing the Mission Burrito to the masses set up shop in a restaurant named after the woman who is famous for popularizing ice cream. If the name Dolly Madison sounds familiar and you're not a history buff, it's because Hostess Brands, the people behind Twinkies, also have a bakery as part of their business known as Dolly Madison Bakery, which is also based on the First Lady. Dolly Madison nearly disappeared back when Hostess announced its plans to go out of business in 2012. Where's the Twinkies? I like snowballs. 
However, it was saved, along with Twinkies, by Apollo Global Management when they acquired nearly everything Hostess in January of 2013. It's just so good. It is just so tasty. So it's my dirty little secret. I love Chipotle. The interior of Chipotle looks rough for a reason. Poodle, Chipotle, okay. <laughs> Jeez, okay. Chipotle. If you could choose one word to describe the interior of a Chipotle, you'd most likely come up with a word like rough, industrial, or tetanus. And while a lot of restaurants spend thousands upon thousands of dollars to create a theme, and it very well could have been a conscious choice, the reality is that because of the limited budget that Chipotle founder Steve Ells had when he opened the first Chipotle, he couldn't afford to hire an interior decorator or to buy fancy interior decor. Instead, most of the original Chipotle was decorated with items from the hardware store, which explains all of the metal and junk boxes. Do you, you want anything else? Yes. Burrito. Speaking of those junction boxes, the original light fixtures were a combination of metal junction boxes and porcelain lamp holders that contained a single halogen bulb, something that was replicated across the country as Chipotle expanded. So they sometimes say that it costs a lot of money to look cheap, but apparently that wasn't the case in terms of at least the first Chipotle, as the items in those early restaurants were actually exactly what they appeared to be. Whether or not that's safe or wise doesn't really matter, as it clearly worked and isn't something that Chipotle has moved away from over 25 years later. They also say that it's important to stand out than to blend in, and it's that decor that gives Chipotle a distinct feeling and ambiance. So perhaps Els went into the wrong business when he chose cooking over home decor. Chipotle wasn't always antibiotic-free. Animal control was called to remove the bird, but when inspectors returned the next day, Live bird, still there. One of the reasons that Chipotle initially blew up onto the scene was its commitment to antibiotic-free chicken. You see, in order to keep their animals healthy and to limit losses due to diseases, farmers have historically force-fed their livestock a ton of antibiotics, which is partially the reason that bacteria are becoming resistant to antibiotics in both animals and humans. One could say that Chipotle was one of the main reasons that antibiotic-free livestock became as popular a concept as it has been, with most restaurants, fast food, or otherwise committing to using antibiotic-free livestock in recent years, with McDonald's doing the same for its Chicken McNuggets. If you do a search on the internet for Chicken McNuggets, this pops up. So you may be surprised to hear that the concept wasn't immediate for Chipotle. In fact, it took a good six years for Chipotle to move towards antibiotic-free chicken, after founder Steve Ells read an article in The Art of Eating about farmers in Iowa raising hogs in super-regulated environments. Ells asked to taste some of the pork from those pigs and realized that they tasted a lot better. And so after that, he started the decision to focus on fresh ingredients and antibiotic-free meat, right before the turn of the millennium. Billions and billions of chickens and pigs Pigs have those delicious Iowan pigs to thank for that. Or maybe they don't, since they might be getting sick without the medication. I was watching your face watching the tape as well. This is a hard time for you guys. But Chipotle is so well known for its antibiotic-free stance that Ells has testified in front of Congress about the practice and what he thinks it means for the future of farming. Um. Uh. No. Free cat toy at Chipotle's. Sure, Chipotle's hit rock bottom. But all that means is that we're ready to bounce back. If you've ever wondered why basically every single ad on television or in print has so much small print, this story will basically answer that for you. What was I supposed to do? Call the principal and say I can't teach today because I'm constipated? Back in 1998, before Chipotle became the household name that it is today, they ran an ad in print that showed a rolled up tinfoil ball that stated, free cat toy with every purchase. Now, if you've ever been to Chipotle, you'll get the joke, as they serve their products in tinfoil, and thus you're always left with a little ball of tinfoil and lots and lots of shame after you're done eating there. However, people didn't get the joke and actually started showing up to Chipotle locations asking for the cat toy around that time. A scarecrow? That's their superhero? They do know he was the one without a brain, right? And so they had to stop running the ad, which considering we're still talking about it 20 years later means it was either genius or a complete disaster. Either way, it did get people in the door, so it couldn't have been all bad. Although if the internet has taught us anything, it's that you don't want to piss off cat people. So I'm sure they ended up handing out a few free burritos to the more particular of the bunch and then added a bunch of small print to their ads in the future. It pays to manage a Chipotle. The paychecks are nice too. 
Sometimes you hear that progressive companies might not live up to their ideals when it comes to paying their own employees or really even treating those people with respect. But when it comes to Chipotle, that really isn't the case, thankfully. In fact, Chipotle can end up paying you really well if you're a general manager through a program called the Elite Restaurateur Program. That program attempts to recruit new general managers, who in turn are meant to recruit and retain new talent, and it awards them with an initial bonus and stock options, as well as a bonus of $10,000 if they hire someone who also ends up becoming a general manager. Honestly, it's exhilarating. It changes your life and it changes the people around you. While that may sound like a pyramid scheme, keep in mind that the Aztec and Mayans did in fact have pyramids of their own, even if they ended up looking more like parallelograms than standard pyramids. Either way, this sort of goes against the idea that working for a fast food restaurant doesn't pay, as long as you're in charge of the entire restaurant, or multiple restaurants, and the people you hire end up doing the exact same thing, you'll be fine. While that always runs a risk that you'll be replaced by your own recruit, it's probably worth it for the chance that you'll get $10,000 on your next paycheck. Think of all the extra guacamole you'll be able to buy. Chipotle has a secret menu, but there's a catch. I mean, let's face it, if you're even contemplating eating here after an E. coli scare, what would it take to stop you? If you've spent any time on the internet, you'll know that most fast food restaurants can make items that aren't on the menu. Does McDonald's even sell real food? People call that a secret menu, but really all it is is a mixture of whatever they have on the menu. Like adding chicken McNuggets to your Big Mac, as in under the bread. And while you can't ask for just anything, as they have to be able to ring it up in the system, most places can be pretty accommodating when it comes to making something like the air, land, and sea sandwich from McDonald's that includes a beef patty, a filet of fish patty, and a chicken patty. Get it? So, like most fast food companies, Chipotle has a secret menu, the quesarito, which is exactly what it sounds like. A burrito with a quesadilla where the tortilla should be. While it sounds like that Taco Bell taco that has chicken instead of a tortilla, this one isn't that bad for you and is actually quite delicious. Just don't ask for it when there's a super long line, as it takes time to create, and they may refuse to make it if they're crunched for time. It took me 23 minutes to get a burrito out of this place. Huh? Luckily for you, since 2016, most Chipotles aren't that busy anymore. So just remember, it's the quesarito, and it very well may save Chipotle in the end. I felt at the end of this, Chipotle owed me something. You can get free Chipotle burritos every day for a year, if... I just got a Chipotle card for one free taco a day for the next 360 days. It's said that only when you're rich and famous will people begin to give you things for free. Did you call it Chipotle? Yeah, and perhaps the best example of that is the free card that Chipotle gives its famous fans. That's right, if you're famous and have made it clear that you love Chipotle, they'll send you a card that is good for free Chipotle for life. Although it is said that the cards actually expire after one year, which is about the amount of time that most people are at the peak of their fame. I tried, to, I tried to buy a Chipotle in Detroit. A few famous people have posted about their for life cards, including Bryce Harper, who plays baseball for the Washington Nationals, and Steven Tyler, the lead singer of Aerosmith. Chicken. You're a chicken guy, yeah. I like it. Why would Chipotle give away these for life? And where did the name come from if they're not actually good for life? The answer is that famous people can influence other people. And by sending these cards out to people who have talked about Chipotle in their interviews before, they're increasing the chance that famous people will not only post about the card on their social media, but also that they'll attend Chipotle once or twice that year and post about that on their social media. The reason they're called for life cards is mainly due to a misunderstanding by some, like the aforementioned Bryce Harper, who thought his card was good for life, while it was actually just good for a year. Either way, that's one year of free Chipotle, and that's really more than enough to last someone a lifetime. McDonald's actually owns Chipotle. Wow. So they're just getting all the paper. McDonald's does not own Chipotle. I don't like McDonald's anymore. I used to eat it. I ate too much of it already. Around the turn of the century, people started saying that Chipotle had been purchased by none other than McDonald's. There was a lot of fear from the Chipotle purists that McDonald's would ruin their favorite restaurant. Why is my face like this? By either changing the menu or introducing less quality ingredients in the name of making a quick buck. If you give me five minutes, I will get you your chicken burrito. 
Now, there's some truth to that, but it's not exactly what you think. Back around that time when Chipotle went into hardcore expansion mode, it needed financial backers to help it do just that. And McDonald's happened to be one of the companies that put their money behind Chipotle. That doesn't mean, though, that McDonald's owns Chipotle at all. It just means that they made a lot of money from Chipotle's expansion around the early to mid-aughts, and that it helped them grow into new markets by sharing their market data. So while it'd be easy to blame McDonald's for the problems that Chipotle has had as of late, the reality is that those were all done by the same people who originally started Chipotle. Don't go run out in search of your nearest Chipotle just yet. Hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. And don't go anywhere. Check out some of our other great videos.